Jansky here, and today we're going to take a look at uh, some more disaccharides and how they're formed, and then also how we digest them. Um, so we're going to take a look at uh, the same uh, disaccharides that uh, you're probably familiar with, uh, sucrose, lactose, and maltose, the ones that are made from units of glucose attached to other monosaccharide sugars um, to form this double uh, disaccharide kind of structure with two units stuck together. Um, if you remember, the general formula for this was C12H22O11. And we're going to take a look at that formula now and see why it is that it's not exactly a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygens. And it has to do with how we put these together. So if we take a look at these, um, it's going to appear like it would make sense if we took a monosaccharide and another monosaccharide and joined them together, that the formula would be double one of those. So C6H12O6 is our familiar um, formula for a monosaccharide such as glucose or fructose or galactose. And if you take those numbers and simply double them all, so you take C6 and C6, add them together, you get C12. C, uh, H12 and H12 would give us H24. And O6 plus O6 would give us O12. So it seems like we're missing here two hydrogens and one oxygen. And that basically makes up a water molecule. So that's why we have here minus one water molecule. And this water molecule is very important because when we remove it, that's how we join the two monosaccharides together to form our disaccharide. So let's take a look at how that process works. Uh, this picture here shows us a monosaccharide and monosaccharide. And if you look at them carefully, you should be able to identify these because you can look at the hydroxyls and see it's a down, down, up, down pattern. So if you said that this was glucose, awesome, you got it right. And if you look at this one over here, it has the same down, down, up, down pattern. Six carbons, five in a ring, so that also is glucose. And I guess if you want to be technical, we could call that alpha glucose because we know that this hydroxyl group on carbon one is down below the ring. So if we want to join these two molecules together, you'll notice here that we've highlighted hydrogen molecule here and a hydrogen and oxygen over here. And if you take that H2O and simply remove it from between these two, you form a water molecule. And that water molecule gets released and now the remaining two glucose uh, molecules can be joined together. And what we get is something that looks like this. So we've taken this carbon bond that's available here and this oxygen, which has a bond available here when you remove that hydrogen atom, and they simply join together and form this bond here. Now you have a disaccharide, and if you remember your disaccharides, you'll know that glucose plus glucose forms maltose. So there's our tasty maltose disaccharide. Um, the process that was involved is a really important one. It's something called dehydration synthesis or condensation. And it's really easy to remember, you don't have to memorize this, because um, this term here, dehydration synthesis, the one that I prefer to use, is it just makes sense. Uh, dehydration, we know, is losing water, so removing water. And synthesis is um, a word that means making or putting together things. Um, so this literally means the removal of water to join molecules together. Condensation is a term that's commonly used, and you see this in chemistry a lot. If you think of condensation like the uh, water forming on a cold mirror when you have a shower from water vapor in the air, um, that's the same kind of idea. So it's water being taken out of the air and uh, that's condensation. Now if you think about it, we took a molecule of glucose and another one and joined them together to make a disaccharide. Well there's no reason we couldn't simply continue doing this. Take another glucose molecule and join it on to this side of this glucose. And keep going that way. We could also take glucose and join it to this side and add some more glucose and glucose. And if we did that, we'd be putting together lots of individual units, so unit, unit, unit called monomers, and we'd make a very long polymer. So in this case, if we took a bunch of glucose molecules and joined them all to each other, we would make a very long polysaccharide. So if you remember your starches like amylose and amylopectin uh, in plants, and if you're an animal, you would create glycogen. Uh, right now my body is doing this because I had some lunch and so I've consumed some glucose and we're probably, I might have consumed too much of it. 
Um, and so my body might be storing it for later use. And we'll, I'll, I'll put together a bunch of polysaccharides in the form of glycogen and store that in my liver and some of my muscles so I can use them for energy later. Now, how do we use that energy out of the polysaccharide if we need it? Well, there's a reverse process we can carry out, and this is called hydrolysis. So you can actually take a water molecule, which is available inside your cells easily, and insert that water molecule into here. And with the use of some enzymes, it'll break this bond and it'll reattach these atoms to the glucose molecule so they're intact, and you produce two glucose. And this is called hydrolysis. And hydro means water and lysis means splitting. So literally this means insertion of water to split molecules apart. Um, if you look at the terms and try to simply associate them with what they mean, then you don't really need to memorize them at all. And the great thing is that these processes are universal. Basically everything in biology is joined together through the process of dehydration synthesis or condensation, whatever you want to call it. And pretty much every molecule that is split apart is split using hydrolysis. The only other thing to remember is that aside from water, you always need enzymes and you need energy. And that's how everything works. So I hope that helps you understand how disaccharides are formed, how we digest them, and the two processes of condensation or dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis.